Erev Tov, good Yantuf. It is good to see you on Zoom, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, there is a sadness in my soul as we begin, because I am used to seeing this sanctuary filled with you, your voices, your presence, and it is clearly absent right now. And so I'm just going to spend the first couple minutes screening through Zoom looking at you, and then I promise I'll close my computer because I was told last week by some people I was looking down at the computer, it was confusing, <laughs> but I like to see you, especially on this, the holiest night of the year, Kol Nidre, Erev Yom Kippur. It's the only night that we wear a talus, and so if it's your custom to wear a talus and you'd like to join me, we're on page two in our High Holy Day prayer book. And we begin with the words, My soul, bless Adonai, Adonai my God. You are very great. You are clothed in beauty and splendor, wrapped in a robe of light. You unfurl the heavens like the curtains of a tent. That is from Psalms 104. Now we take hold of our talit and recite the blessing, Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu lehitatev v'tzitzi. And now I am going to close my computer. Hopefully people had a good dinner. We can put the food away. It's even more tempting when it's in the next room. But uh, let's begin together, joining with Noah and Cantor Zell in song. One day, a man lost his keys, and so he began to search underneath the lamppost nearby. About 10 minutes after searching, a woman drove by and stopped and came out of her car and said, excuse me, sir, can I help you? And the man said, that would be great. I lost my keys, so I'm looking for them, but I just can't find them. And the woman said to him, well, then when did you see them last? And the man said, under the bush over there. And so the woman said, wait a minute, under the bush over there? Then why are you looking here under the lamppost? And the man said, because it's so much easier to look under the light, which is to say that sometimes we look in the wrong places simply because it's easier filled with light, when what we're truly seeking is actually hiding, sometimes in the darkest of places. And that's what I'd like us to consider today. 
that we not just look in the easy places under the light, even though you're at home, but do the hard work at hand. And I know it's that much more difficult at home in some ways. And so I hope you'll begin to tune out some of the distractions and to tune in um, to our holiday, this gift that we've been given by our ancestors, that for 24 hours a year, we separate ourselves from food and water and exercise and really just focus on the soul. And so with that, let's begin with the candle lighting on page nine. And if we're able to bring in Leah Sherman. Beautiful. Oh, wonderful, with great helpers. Together we give thanks. we formally begin the liturgy, for those who are new to Temple Beth Elohim, we welcome you. We're glad you're with us. On Zoom, of course, we can't all speak at the same time, and so you're muted. But at this time, we would typically introduce ourselves to the people around us. So even if you're in gallery view or speaker view, it doesn't matter. If you can give a heart tap or a wave to your neighbor on Zoom. Some of you will choose gallery view to see members of our community. Some will choose speaker view to see the speaker at that moment. Either way works. We're just glad you're with us. There will be times when we invite you to participate by uh, placing a name in the chat box for our prayer for healing and for Mourner's Kaddish. Hopefully you're familiar by now, but if not, it should be below on your screen. And so now let's begin with the liturgy of Kol Nidre on page 14. If you have a prayer book, join with me at home. If not, please listen. Yom Kippur, the Jewish people's festival of the soul, and Kol Nidre, its sacred portal, a night of deep emotions, a night as the psalmist wrote to rejoice with trembling. We rejoice at the sound of Kol Nidre, Rhythmic words of release from vows, oaths, and promises to God we fail to keep. We tremble at the melody, music of spiritual amazement. It fills us with awe as we stand before God and Torah. We rejoice that we stand together, strengthened by community in this hour of shared weakness and humility. We tremble. For tonight, we confess our flaws, admit our imperfection, 
and acknowledge a power far beyond our understanding. We rejoice that we commit ourselves to great endeavors because we feel so deeply and think so nobly. We tremble, for we find that our ideals are far greater than our ability. Our promises surpass our might. We rejoice in the freedom that is Kol Nidre's true gift, the freedom to begin a new year without fear of failure, to aspire to be God's image in the world. We tremble because we are mortal. We rejoice in our gratitude for life. We rejoice with trembling and enter Kol Nidre to face our humanity. At this time, we are going to continue by listening to the sounds of Kol Nidre. As you well know, especially if you've been a member for many years, we are usually graced by Sheila Fikowski playing her violin. Sheila is a member of the Boston Symphony and uh, lends such beauty to our service. And so we asked her to come in and be held up by the presidents uh, as she would typically within the sanctuary. Um, and so this has been pre-recorded, but I want to thank Sheila and Victor for recording Kol Nidre for us so that we could listen this evening and acknowledge the presidents who were able to be in our sanctuary, who represent our proud past. And so let us now listen Kol Nidre.
Let our speech be pure and our promises sincere. Let our spoken words, every vow and every oath be honest and well-intentioned. Let our words cause no pain, bring no harm, and never lead to shame, distrust, or fear. And if after honest effort, we are unable to fulfill a promise, a vow, or an oath, may we be released from its obligation and forgiven for our failure. Let our speech be pure and our promises sincere. If you're able, please rise.
my way? Am I prepared? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Are you listening to my prayer? Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Let us remain standing as we turn to the Shema, page 28.
going to share a quick word. Yes, please. Change of plan. Great. Mask on, mask off. Just a quick story about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because I know so many people have been watching, um, especially hearing El Malay Rahamim, Mourner's Kaddish in the Capitol. But one day after Justice Ginsburg took her seat on the Supreme Court, it just so happened that an Orthodox Jewish lawyer approached her, true story, um, and told her that in order to try cases before the Supreme Court, lawyers had to formally receive a certificate. And on every certificate, after the printed year, for instance, 2020, it had to say AD, meaning in the year of our Lord. And so the lawyer came to Justice Ginsburg and said, it's not right. Can't they just remove in the year of our Lord? And maybe, you know, you can change it. And to Ginsburg, a new justice was a bit surprised. She didn't realize that was the case. She went to check it out, said I'd look into it, and realized it was true. And so she went to the chief justice and said, excuse me, sir, I'm new here, but can we change the certificate that's to something that doesn't say in the year of our Lord? And the chief justice replied, it was good enough for Justice Brandeis. It was good enough for Justice Frankfurter. It was good enough for Justice Goldberg, and he was about to get to it was good enough for Justice Fortas in the 60s, only to hear Ruth Bader Ginsburg cry out, but it's not good enough for Justice Ginsburg. She was a true fighter for justice, especially for the Jewish people. And whether we're liberal or conservative, whether our legal theory is activist or constructionist, originalist, we can recognize that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a fighter for justice and a proud representative of the Jewish people. And so on this day when we observed the first Jewish official to lie in state ever in American history, we think of her and consider how to make the world a better place as we continue with our independent prayer. Remaining standing, if you are, with the words, Adonai Svatai Tiftach, O God, open up our mouths, open up our hearts to the fight for justice, the bringing of compassion and love to our world. <laughs> Adonai, open up my lips, and my mouth may declare your praise. Ya la 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 Page 48, if you're following along. Hello, hey, Abraham. Hello, hey, Yitzchak. Hello, hey, Yaakov. Hello, hey, Sarah. Hello, hey, Rivka. Hello, 
חסדים טובים, וקונה הכל, וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות, ומביא גאולה לבני בניהם, למען שמו going to continue with a public confession, the Ashamnu. But before we do, I always find the Ashamnu prayer, the communal vidui, very powerful as we pound our chests and confess our sins. And each year I comment how we confess in the plural form, for we are responsible for one another. But this year I recognize that that's a little more difficult as we all sit at home. And so as we confess, I ask that you try to see one another because one of the antidotes to sin is to be proximate to each other, to feel responsible towards each other, even when physically distant. And I wanna make sure that as we confess these sins, we remember not only those next to us, but especially those in need who due to the increasing gaps and disparities in our society are too often unseen and forgotten. I hope that if anything, our physical distance this evening will serve as a reminder of the work we have to do to bring people closer to each other. It's a little harder this year, but let us remember, let us confess, and let us begin to make change for the year ahead. And so I invite you to, as we do each year, take a fist to wake up the heart that sometimes has been sleeping despite the call of the shofar. 
and we knock ourselves to recognition that yes, we confess these sins. And I invite everyone in the sanctuary to join with me so we can hear the sounds of our community. Ashamnu Bagadnu Gazanu Tibanu Dofi Ay, 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 Heavy nu, the hirshanu, zad nu, hamas nu, tafal nu shake. Ay, 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 Lats nu, marad nu, ni ats nu. Ay, 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 Sara nu, avi nu, pasha nu. Saranu kishinu ore ai 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 Page 86. For these sins, our God, we ask forgiveness. The ways we have wronged you deliberately and by mistake, and harm we have caused in your world through the words of our mouths. The ways we have wronged you by hardening our hearts and the harm we have caused in your world through careless speech. The ways we have wronged you through lies and deceit and harm we have caused in your world through gossip and rumor. The ways we have wronged you by judging others unfairly and harm we have caused in your world through disrespect to parents and teachers. The ways we have wronged you through insincere apologies and harm we have caused in your world by mistreating a friend or neighbor. The ways we have wronged you through violence and abuse and harm we have caused in your world through dishonesty and business. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to eternity. The ways we have wronged you by hating without cause and harm we have caused in your world through offensive speech. The ways, the ways we have, we have wronged, wronged you with your slanderous tongue and, and harm we have caused in your world through a selfish or petty, petty spirit. spirit. 
ביאל כולם אלו הסליחות, סלח לנו, מחל לנו, כפר לנו. on page 100. God of forgiveness, we come before you in need of compassion. At Sinai, you spoke words that guide our lives to this day, but our ancestors lost faith in you, lost hope in their Redeemer. With one voice, they had promised we will do and obey, and yet, stiff-necked, they broke their word, adoring an idol of gold. How wondrous your compassion in the face of their rebellion, your forgiveness in that moment of human weakness and doubt, we too have broken promises to you. We too worship the work of our own hands. We too make, a, make of gold a God, and we too forsake your word. At Sinai, you revealed 13 attributes of mercy, these aspects of your nature, your very essence, we now recall. your ways be aware of God, for there is no sovereign without a people in Melech Beloam. We are the chariot on which God's glory rides, for there is no sovereign without a people. Let the love of God be spread through our deeds, for there is no sovereign without a people. You are my servant, Israel. I will be glorified through you, for there is no sovereign without a people. Where is God? Anywhere we let God in. For there is no sovereign without a people in Melech Beloam. Eternal God, you revealed to Moses your 13 attributes of mercy. They exist in the world through our awareness. They transform the world through our actions. We speak them now as prayer and aspiration. We continue with Avinu Malkenu on page 114. And for the safety of those in the sanctuary, I'm going to ask the cantor to once again face forward as opposed to the ark. But let us first read together in Hebrew and then in English. Avinu Malkenu Shema Kolenu. Avinu Malkenu, Almighty and Merciful, hear, hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu Chatanu Lefanecha. Avinu Malkenu, we have strayed and sinned before you. Avinu Malkenu, chamol aleinu v'al olaleinu v'tapenu. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and our families. Avinu Malkenu, kale dever v'cherev v'rav me'aleinu. Avinu Malkenu, halt the onslaught of sickness, violence, and hunger. Avinu Malkenu, kale kol tsar u'mastin me'aleinu. Avinu Malkenu, halt the reign of those who cause pain and terror. Avinu Malkenu Kodvenu Besefer Chaim Tovin. Avinu Malkenu enter our names in the book of lives well lived. Avinu Malkenu Chadesh Alenu Shana Tova. Avinu Malkenu renew for us a year of goodness. 
Avinu malkinu malei adenu mebirchotecha. Avinu malkinu, let our hands overflow with your blessings. Avinu malkinu harem keren mishichecha. Avinu malkinu, let our eyes behold the dawn of redemption. Avinu malkinu na atashivenu rekam milfanecha. Avinu malkinu, we pray, do not turn us away from you with nothing. Avinu malkinu kabel berachamim v'ratzon etzvilatenu. Avinu malkinu, welcome our prayer with love, accept and embrace it. Avinu malkinu asei manu leman shmecha. Avinu malkinu, act towards us as befits your name. Avinu malkinu asei leman cha im lo lemanenu. Avinu malkinu, act for your sake, if not for ours. Avinu malkinu in lanu melech ela ata. Avinu malkinu, you alone are our sovereign. Avinu malkinu v'tach sharei shamayim letfilatenu. Avinu malkinu, let the gates of heaven be open to our prayer. Avinu malkinu shma kolenu. Avinu Malkinu, hear our voice. Treat us with tender compassion. Avinu Malkinu, Choneno Vaneno, Kien Banu Masim, Asei Manu Tzarka Vachesed, Hoshienu. Avinu Malkinu, Almighty and Merciful, answer us with grace, for our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love. Avinu Malkeinu Shema Koleinu Avinu Malkeinu Chatanu Lefanecha Avinu Malkeinu
So typically, one of our services begins at 9 p.m. for Kol Nidre, and you hear the sermon at around 10 o'clock at night, which is not an easy task. So Rabbi Sapphire, you have it a little easier this year, and uh, I invite you to share words of Torah. Thank you, Rabbi. Good yantif, everyone. A finger on the record button of my prized stereo tape deck. I quietly sat on the floor of my bedroom. I was in fifth or sixth grade on the verge of becoming a teenager. You can imagine the reasons a typical preteen might retreat to their room, closing the door behind them, alone, needing a break from the unjust world around me. I tuned in to another frequency. 92.9 Z93, the radio station that brought me in touch with another world. Calling into the station, I made a request. And I was well aware that it was a request quite different from the music request of my peers. A finger on the record button of my prized stereo tape deck. I would listen until my request was answered and then captured on a cassette tape. I would play that anthem over and over again when I needed to think, when I needed a fresh perspective, when I was lonely or overwhelmed, when I couldn't sleep. That song was like a meditation. That song from a distance, sung by Bette Midler. Okay, it was around 1990 and the 90s were cheesy but I was an old soul and that song spoke to me. From a distance, the world looks blue and green and the snow capped mountains white. From a distance, the ocean meets the stream and the eagle takes to flight. From a distance, there is harmony and it echoes through the land. It's the voice of hope. It's the voice of peace. It's the voice of every man a beautiful view from on high when things seem to be swirling around in chaos. These, world, these words still speak to me at a time when we're all so wrapped up in this notion of distancing, physical distancing, social distancing, three feet, six feet, 10 feet, close proximity right now is not safe. So we're commanded, keep your distance. Having to remain distant has forced us to do almost everything we do differently. Just last week, I sat outside with a woman in mourning who suffered a terrible loss. All I wanted to do was give her a hug. I have witnessed my child wanting to lead an apprehensive new student into her school, hesitating when she remembered that she couldn't just take her by the hand. Instead of complaining and wallowing in the fact that we cannot enjoy closeness and proximity, I've decided this year that I'm going to find the beauty and blessing in distance. After all, distance is relative, right? There has to be something positive about it. On Yom Kippur, we are commanded to distance ourselves from five things, eating and drinking, wearing leather footwear, bathing, applying cosmetics, and engaging in sexual intimacy. These are restrictions unique to Yom Kippur. For on Yom Kippur, we are likened to the angels who have no physical needs, but maintain a close connection to God. Notice what I just said. By nature, they are distanced from the physical, but as close as anyone could possibly be to God. Physical distance spiritual connection. Our mystical tradition teaches us that by briefly distancing our relationship with our body, for example, by not eating, especially in a way that we typically enjoy, we maintain a deeper connection with the soul. When a person eats, 
They are nourished by an outside source, the food and the drink they ingest. On a fast day, vitality has to come from the soul, from energy already stored within. In other words, it takes us distancing ourselves from that which is typical in order to reach a new height, gain a new perspective, and become closer to God. It's not an easy thing to do, to distance, even for a short while, from that which is usually life-giving, but it is necessary in order to experience a shift of perspective. I am reminded of the story of Balaam from the book of Numbers, chapter 22, when an enemy king hires Balaam to curse the Israelite people. Balaam, however, is told by God, you shall not curse that people, for they are blessed. But when Balaam sees the Israelite people, not once, but three times, he defies the king's orders and blesses the people. It is from this high vantage point, from a mountain, that Balaam blesses the people. Rashi notes that it is precisely Balaam's perspective that gives him the ability to bless the people. From a distance, Balaam can see not just the individual tents of each tribe, but the entire nation. From a distance, he sees that their tent openings do not face each other. Only from a distance can he see that they value common decency and privacy. This is why Rashi says that Balaam proclaims the blessing as Matovu Ohalecha Yaakov, how good are your tents, your dwelling places, O Israel. From a distance, there is harmony and it echoes through the land. It's the voice of hope. It's the voice of peace. Distance is indeed a blessing. Ironically, at times, it gives us the ability to see something better than when we can see it up close. I just learned something new about my beloved song from a distance in studying and researching for this sermon. It actually wasn't written by Bette Midler. It was written by another Jewish woman, Julie Gold. And she experienced a distance moment of breakthrough herself. In 1978, at the age of 22, Gold moved to New York City to pursue her dream of becoming a songwriter. But as she said, dreams do not pay the rent. So she had to work various temp jobs at night. She demonstrated vacuum cleaners, Mr. Coffees and toaster ovens. She worked at flea markets and in a Venetian, in a Venetian blinds factory. She struggled not just financially, but desperately with self doubt and fear. Just before her 30th birthday in 1985, her parents sent her the piano that she grew up playing. She took the day off work to be home when the piano, her truest love and friend, arrived. Back together again after all those years. The piano came into her little one-room apartment and fit into the only place it could. But the movers told her that since it had been on the truck for over 24 hours, she needed to give it a chance to settle. They told her not to play it for a day. So there we were in the same room, unable to make music, she said. She sat with the piano, polished it, and then went to bed, looking at the piano all night to make sure that it was really there. The next day, she sat down, and the words and the melody of From a Distance poured out of her. Julie said, on one hand, it took two hours to write. On the other, it took 30 years. Hello, Distance, the artist of passion and love, perspective and clarity. My mom, God bless her, is no stranger to distance. Having endured an auto stem cell transplant less than two years ago, she was required to isolate herself for months at a time when social distancing was not yet a thing. Yet she wrote me the other day. 
This is the longest I've ever gone without seeing you and our delicious Boston grandbabies, but it is the most we have ever FaceTimed. Hosting Bubby Camp through the iPad, reading, beating, drawing, crafting, storytelling, all from a distance. Havdala family Zoom every week, guitar song sessions, now more frequent, even on FaceTime, makes a day brighter. My more local grandchildren text and video call all the time. This is certainly an outgrowth of less in-person visits and hugs. Yes, less hugs, but more words. They say, I love you, Bubby. I miss you, Bubby. A heart breaks from the distance, yet from a distance, it bursts with love. And I have to admit, that I, like almost all of us living through this pandemic, have also had many moments of heartbreak this spring and summer. You may not know that my husband, Doug, is immunocompromised. Thank God he's healthy day to day. However, our family has needed to be very cautious in our daily interactions and decisions relating to work and school. While we may have gotten used to the physical distance, the masks, paying attention to airflow, it's been extraordinarily isolating, socially and emotionally. I am not just an extreme extrovert, but deep within the core of my being, I thrive on closeness and intimacy. In fact, I crave connection. And it really hurts inside not to be able to experience that. I acknowledge as I teach tonight that I'm not asking us to do something easy. Stepping back to find perspective and connection at such a difficult time is really hard. I've even tried to convince myself that it's not. In fact, it is a few of you who have helped me realize this and even grow in these difficult moments. For you have so sweetly asked me if I'm okay, because while I'm a bit separate, I'm in my office and not in the sanctuary. While Gan Elohim has returned to school, but my child cannot, well, I cannot participate in a way that I want as your child becomes bar bat mitzvah. You have said that I appear to be sad. And the truth is that I am. While I want to answer, it's okay. In reality, this is hard and it hurts. But then do you know what I find myself saying? I'm really grateful. For I know how hard Stephen, our executive director, and Emily, our facilities manager, Devin and Max, and our entire staff have worked just to make it possible for me to be in my office alone tonight. But I'm not alone. I'm in the building. And I have our student intern, Zach, waving at me through the closed door every five minutes. And I have all of you here on Zoom. And I can hear and see without delay, even through a screen, what is happening in the sanctuary and even in your own homes. I feel safe here and I feel like I am being true to my values and I'm thankful to be able to honor the needs of my family and to keep others safe as well. So thank you, Stephen. And thank you, Emily, and all of you for caring so much. Thank you for caring so much to take the extra time and energy to work so hard. And thank you to our rabbis and our cantor for leading the B'mitzvah services that are in the sanctuary so I can lead the ones on Zoom. And thank you to the Gan Elohim family for continuing to express their excitement that Oren will return to school when the time is right. From a distance, I stand. From the painful distance, I stand from you. I still see love and caring and empathy. And my goal is to hold on to it, even when 
I feel isolated. I pray the same for you. This year, may distance be our teacher. I know we will continue to feel the ache of distance in our hearts. We will feel the hunger pangs of distance in our bodies. We will feel the emptiness of distance in our souls. But sometimes, I pray, distance will help us grow, will help us to achieve, to know gratitude, to learn. And yes, sometimes it will take distance to connect more deeply. Today on this day of Yom Kippur, you will feel that distance, but may you embrace it and work through it. And in this coming year, be inscribed in the book of life and blessing with a new perspective to accompany you. Can you hear at zone? May this be God's way. Can you hear at zone? Can you hear at zone? If we could just take a moment and just put our palms up like this, wherever you are, whatever room or whatever space you're in right now, and just see if we can send a lot of our, our love and, and healing through the, the Zoom waves right now so that we all feel each other's connected, connectivity and connection. We're sending it through the screen. We're sending it out. I know that many of you might have been expecting us to sing a Bette Midler song right now. <laughs> But instead, we're going to turn to the words of our tradition. Yehuda Halevi, in the 15th century, wrote, Ya'ana em sa'acha, where can I go to find you? Mekomcha na'alev in elam, you are so hidden. Ve'ana lo em sa'acha, but where can't I go to find you? Kavodcha ma'le'olam, because you are ever-present and you fill the world. Darashti kivadcha, I seek you. And I try to draw you close to me. With everything in my heart, I cry out to you. And the moment that I try to look and search, search for you and reach out for you, I find you reaching out for me. Yana em sacha, kivod chanana benela, ve analo em sacha, kivod chamale ola. Yana em sacha, mekom chanala. Continue with the words of Mourner's Kaddish on page 122. 
if we're able to open the chat box so that people can type in the names of those individuals they're remembering if you're observing a yard site this week or currently within the period of mourning you've lost a parent during the past 11 months or an immediate family member during the past 30 days. Of course, I think of my sister, Jill Sissenweinberger, and uh, let us allow people to type in the names of those individuals they're remembering on this day, and then we'll recite Mourner's Kaddish together. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemerabah. Amen. Biamad ivrach rote biamlich malchute, v'chaychon v'yomechon v'chayed d'cho beit Yisrael, b'agalav izman kariv imru amen. Yehe shmei rabah mabarach v'elam olamei almaya, yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit ba'ar v'yotromam v'yit naseh, v'yit adar v'yit ale v'yit alal shmei t'kusha b'richu. Elamin ko berchata veshirata, tush bachata venechamata, damiran bi amavim ru, amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shamaya, vechaim alenu vi al kol Yisrael vim ru, amen. O se shalom vim rumav, hu ya se shalom alenu, vi al kol Yisrael vi al kol yoshve tevel vim ru, amen. Hu ya se shalom, ya se shalom. Shalom Aleinu Be'al Kol Yisrael Bu'yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Be'al Kol Yisrael So tomorrow we have a very full day. We hope you'll join with us. We begin at 8.30 with our Yaldenu, our pre-reader service. And then at 9 o'clock, we begin our morning service. And I know it confused some of you on Rosh Hashanah. What we've done is we've taken the morning service and divided it into three parts, recognizing that the Zoom medium can be very tiring. And we thought it would be best to give people a break in between sections of the service. And so at nine o'clock, we'll begin with the morning blessings, probably for about 40 minutes. And then we'll take a break and walk outside, hopefully, and then continue on at 10 o'clock with the Torah and the Haftarah service. Uh, President of our congregation, Neil Silverston, will address the congregation at that time as well. And then at 11 o'clock, we'll continue with the Yom Kippur liturgy, and I'll be able to teach Torah tomorrow morning in the 11 o'clock hour. And then at 12 o'clock, TGIHH will take place. And I just realized as I announced that, I forgot meditation at eight o'clock. We wake up with uh, meditation practice. The space is unlimited this year. We filled it up the last few years. So don't worry about space. Come ready to practice eight o'clock. Then we have adult nine, 10, 11, TGIHH at 12. And then at two o'clock, we'll continue on with the hour of our responses, where we as a community will gather to share um, based on the sermon I gave on Erev Rosh Hashanah, the exercises that I hope you've been doing. We've received hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of responses. So uh, I'm looking forward to two o'clock as we share. Then when that's over, a quick break, and we'll continue with a healing service led by our cantor emerita Jody Suffren, and uh, at this time in world history, uh, how appropriate it is that we gather with our Cantor Emerita uh, for a service of healing and comfort. Following the healing service, we'll gather at five o'clock for our afternoon service and Yisker, a short break, and then at six o'clock, we will begin our concluding prayers to probably end at around 6.20 with Havdalah. Traditionally, we welcome the kids back in the sanctuary for Havdalah. And so you can mark your calendar uh, 620 if you want to bring the family back on Zoom as we conclude together. And then at 630, we'll begin our break the fast. And we really don't want anyone to be alone. 
And so we have a Zoom break the fast as well. If you'd like to kind of eat in community, in conversation with a few other temple members, we hope you'll reach out to Susan Karen. That is just tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you beyond tomorrow. You'll forget. Uh, it's a full day, and we hope uh, you'll be with us throughout. Let us now conclude our service in the sanctuary. We are together on page 126. If you are following along at home, these words of Adon Alam, please join us. Adon Alam, Asher Malach, Beterem Kol, Yitzir Nivra, Yed Nasa, Bechef Sokol, Azai Melech, Zai <laughs> Shem alach beterem kol yitzir nivra leit nasa bechef sokol azay melech shem onikra beacharei kichlot akol levado imlok nora vehu haya vehu ove betifara vehu haya vehu ove betifara. Two last announcements before we go. One, don't forget the High Holy Day food drive. Many local food organizations count on us this year. So please send in your tzedakah. And two, I'll just share with you, I was reading a book of prayers today, and I saw a prayer that read, Dear God, so far today I'm doing all right. I haven't gossiped, lost my temper, been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. However, I'm going to get out of bed in a few minutes, and I'll need a lot of help after that. <laughs> Amen. Which is to say, it's, let's be gentle, let's be compassionate. We all make mistakes. Let's forgive each other. Let's forgive ourselves. Let's open up the microphones if we can now and wish each other a good yanta felicia natova. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Oh, 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 oh.